title control initialized. Hey hey people, Five Aces here. Before we get started with today's cast, a couple, um, a couple caveats that I'd like to bring up. First off, there's no camera. Reason being that I'm trying to encode without the camera for the time being and see if that speeds up the process and uh, minimizes the amount of crashes that my laptop is producing while rendering. Because the codec is usually, um, yeah, just, it's just out of their league. Uh, second off, this cast is, is being recorded a couple times, uh, a couple days after the after Putin went hay haywire. So I'm just glad that this is no Ukraine versus Russia matchup. And suffice to say, what the actual fuck? I'm not, a, I'm not trying to get all political here, but what what's happening right there? I did not expect to uh, live through another war on the European mainland after the Balkans uh, this this quickly after the Balkans basically. Yeah, geez, this is just an absolute tragedy and uh, I've heard from many Russian people that they actually do disagree with Putin's uh, sentiment here, a as do I. Well, that out of the way, let's focus our attention on the game at hand. This is the fourth game in a best of nine series, uh, or best of 11, between Mr. Kov and Mr. Dang Shat. And what a series it has been so far. This is a super interesting map, by the way. Uh, was busy getting the political out of the way, but this is called Spearhead, and it is a map with proxy spawns, where you basically have to expand away from an opponent, but at the same rate, have to keep your uh, your own main line expansions uh, or and your own main base safe, and that is super tough to do. It lends itself to double ref opener. Let's put it that way. It's double ref mandatory uh, for all intents and purposes. And Kav got away with it with grabbing the World Eric Scott free. Now, this opens up so many opportunities for him because this doesn't only act as, as a source of passive income, uh, interest and staking, you know, but it also acts as a forward proxy vision scout uh, scouting tool here. So that's pretty good. Thangshot went for some grenadiers and they did not pay off in the slightest. He is capturing the corner of Derek though. Oh, and the Engineer survives here from Kav. That is so lucky. Grenadier lives to fight another day, but does not, crucially, does not kill the Engineer. Okay, the Derek is being hosed down. And now this is the, yeah, this is just the, the beauty of having won the early, the early skirmishes. You're now able to just send your own infantry wherever the opponent is and apply pressure. Plus he's got the vision as well, so super easy for him. Oh, wait. Is this... Oh. Okay. The MCV is moving out again. What was he trying to do there? Was that actually a move out with the MCV? Was that intended? Intended to be maybe a base push situation, but... Uh, if so, it failed. It failed horrendously. Anyway, let's analyze the map while we're having a, a bit of downtime here in peace and quiet. Ranger is picking up a, a very wounded engineer. Both are going for a war factory after a double ref, which is honestly the only viable build here that I can see, because war factory rush leaves you with little forces to defend your home front, and uh, your home front is your enemy is at your enemy's gates. So there's that. Double derricks in the corners, so that is symmetrical. If you lose one side, you can still opt for the other. That is kind of good. Okay, the forward vision gets now finally shot down. And that is Dang Shot re-establishing a little semblance of map control, but it's not looking hard for him. There is nothing to capture here, but there is a gem mine. So this is very restricted in growth. If you see, uh, this can only grow like on these tiles. So the spread is going to be very limited. This is not going to be the most juicy gem mine, but I, I like the concept. Yeah, and here's a mirrored mine as well. I kind of like the concept, restricts uh, the amount you can get, but given that it takes a lot of time to get to that mine, it takes, uh, it's gonna be ridiculous, like a ridiculous income spike by the time this is being, this is being claimed. That's super interesting, it's, it's gonna be a crazy income spike followed by basically a trickle of income afterwards to claim this expansion. So APC built for Dangshot again, yeah, the, I kind of see that, I can kind of see that. He, he feels like he's behind, he also went for double flame towers just doesn't feel confident here Alrighty, the engineer is in the corner it has not been sniffed out 
light vehicle build from Carve as well. I like that. Oh, it is being met with flamethrower resistance. All right, some good shots here from the flamethrowers into the center of mass. Gets some some scorchings, some scorchings here. Ooh, the front lines, they're crumbling. One ore truck trying to tango here as well. More APCs arriving. I'm fairly sure Kav hasn't seen all the all the APCs yet, so he may just infer that this is a single APC opener, which is fairly standard. But Dang Shot himself has also yeah, relocated a little further north. This is an extremely exposed base. I do not like that at all. Like, if Kav is ever clued in, if he just sends a ranger scouting run into the main base and finds out, hey, there's an open war factory, there's a triple refinery that is not being guarded by anything whatsoever. Yeah. But Dangshot is gambling on this so hard. I'm really interested to see the economy. The economics here are looking fairly even. Four derricks for Kav, obviously, that is going to reflect itself in a momentary army advantage. What a crazy week this has been. <laughs> okay. Those tanks have given away their position. And Conyard has been deployed. Hmm. What an awkward game. There is an actual expansion out for Cuff, so this is kind of big. Dangshot was forced into going for this super cheese build because it was behind. So he was like, yeah, screw it. May as well gamble. He is running the gambit here. Welcome to Blob Town here. Yeah. Blob Town USA, population, a lot of treaded vehicles. And a lot of disposable infantry as well. A couple technicians to boot. Ooh, that is a rocket dense and saturated calf army. Very juicy. Also being beefed up by a couple medics. Medics, by the way, have higher health pools than regular infantry, so that's kind of cool. In, in smaller skirmishes, it kind of makes the different all the difference. It also makes them more resilient against flak fire. Um, okay, here is now an actual expansion out from Dangshot, who took his sweet time to deploy his service depot. I'm just wondering, Kalf is usually so good at uh, at finding the kind of uh, finding a window of opportunity for some aggression, but he has completely failed to do anything. He was just sitting idly, sitting by idly, chilling. Waiting for Dang Shot to ex uh, to just deplete his main base. That is super interesting. There is still that's a fairly scary army. The problem is that APCs are not that good at frontlining because their their health pool is not high, and as soon as the rocket numbers start uh, increasing, they they kind of diminish in effectiveness. I'm just curious. The assets are even. I mean, it has been a fairly passive game for all intents and purposes. Oh, the micro. The micro from the ranger killing all the rocket soldiers. And now this is opens up a window of opportunity. Oh, APC's going in. Oh, the passing. Passing has screwed them over royally. But they have bought enough time for the army to rotate. So this is not the worst thing in the world. Medics! Medics are sitting here. Sitting ducks in the front lines. Yeah, your increased health ain't gonna help you there. Wow, Dangshot did not lose a harvester. Somehow. Somehow the harvester survived. And there is a Raider Dome out for Dangshot. Okay, mirrored by a Raider Dome for Kav though as well. Alright, my video is stuttering a little. Uh, Dangshot needs to make sure he does not overcommit. Yeah, yeah, he's doing the smart thing. Just sending his... Sending a little... Uh, a little force out to defend the war fields. Meanwhile, the, ma the majority of the pack are just all in such a beautiful... What is the helicopter doing? Alright, we've got a Black Hawk down. Also, the explosion somehow fizzled. There was no explosion here at all, like no crash. That kind of looked like a bug. Interesting. Well, the Raider Dome certainly is in an exposed position. This would have been a good concave for a dang shot, but yeah, Kav didn't fall for it. <laughs> Jeez Louise. What a blob game. Yeah, yeah, dang shot is all too aware of what's what's inbound. There is a lot of army inbound. Most of all. 
Okay, Tanya is out. Tier 4 has been purchased. And let's see. Oh, the V2, though. Oh, ho, ho. what an opening shot. Tanya is here as well. Well, she's got to even the odds. Oh, oh, she got sniped by the V2. What a timely shot here. That was brilliant, actually. That made sure that Kav could not advance any further. Really good shot. Okay, these tanks got cleaned up by the infantry squad. Oh, nope, nope, they're still roaming. Killed three harvesters. Artilleries are out to counter any... Yeah. Okay, there needs to be... The airfield is deployed. There need to be a couple yaks out in the sky to snipe artilleries and maybe go for a crash landing. Honestly... Oh, okay. Time to get Nick. Wait, he got a spy in as well. Ooh, veteran C1. That is big. Plus, Kav is floating hard. He is ahead, a harvester, and two derricks. So, no big surprise here. The Tanya nerf with the Scalia. You can now see, like, she's got the heroic icon. That's an idea that got transferred over from Shadow Paradise, or at least they used to do in Shadow Paradise way before uh, they did in another mod, so. So, good hustle there. Oh no! The War Factory is being under siege. <laughs> being taken under siege, and there is nothing you, there ain't nothing you can do about that one. Man, the target fire! Oh, it was not too bad. He was trying to lead the shot here. It's a pretty good idea. Oh, Tani is in a very exposed position. Like, this Yak Pass could kill so much. Oh, very much worth it. Really good Yak Pass. Needs to keep that up, but isn't doesn't have the income. Also lost his Derek here in the middle as well, so... Mm. Yeah, the tanks cleaned it out, cleaned it up. So now it's all downhill in the earnings. Well, Kav is starting to deplete his uh, resource bank as well. But in terms of assets, it is a 12k lead now. And that's not necessarily uh, due to engagements. That's more rather due to the harvester situation. Okay, there is a tank and a grenadier roaming the map. That's the grenadier from the early game. Yikes. I think a transition to flag tracks would be advisable. Also, not building V2s and instead building uh, two harvesters. Two more harvesters, I think, is all you need. Oof. So hard to keep them alive. There is another Yakat. Oh, nice! Taking a shot, taking a pot shot at the artillery and then moving back immediately. That is a micro battle. Oh! Triple Yak pass! Triple kill? Hell yeah. Oh, there's a flag track as well. Smart. Shooting it over the ridge. Is he gonna line up a shot? He can shoot the tech center from over the ridge as well. Oh, ho, 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 ho. 1100 down the drain. And another 1500 to boot. Yes, sir. Oh, this flag truck. Veteran C2 already uh, paid for itself. More than three times over. That was very well played. That was only on the back of the back of one flag truck. Dang shot! Oh! <laughs> Dang shots! Micro here. Single units making all the difference. Jeez, Louise, he's so broke though. Can he stem the tide despite all of this? Holy smokes! Ah, that was kind of a whiff. But the combat tab, yeah, look at that. That is significant. He's bleeding more harvesters, though. That is a problem. T coil is being deployed. Ah, no friendly fire deny on the bounty. You can do that, by the way, if your own units uh, score a killing blow on a unit, um, on your own unit. Okay. Ah. Oh no. <laughs> then uh, you didn't. You deny the bounty. Where is Tanya now? Oh, there she is. Yeah, really good micro from Kav here as well. Oh! <laughs> Tanya weaving in and out, dodging shots. Holy smokes! Oh no! She is allowed to go ham. This is such a crazy micro battle here. Flag trucks paying big dividends this game, I gotta say, man. Problem is there is no Iron Curtain. 
With an Iron Curtain, this would be way more feasible as a defense. Honest, also, Dang Shot did never rebuild his Harvesters all too well. Oh, there's the Tank Hammer closing the sack. I am predicting a loss of Dang Shot despite all this madness. Despite everything that he brought to the table here. It's been a really, really good run though in this game. Both have zero eco? I mean, yeah, this map has zero eco, let's put it that way. Man, but there is a tidal wave of infantry crashing in here. Melee kill on Tanya. Alright. He's moving out, but there is nothing else stopping the army. The brunt of the infantry are here to stay. That is a GG, if I ever saw one. That is a... That game has been lost off the back of not rebuilding harvesters. She, she. 16 minutes of just sweet, sweet micro. Oh, I've got the bug again. So as soon as I release the uh, the key, the it's gonna auto scroll. That's just how it works apparently now. Well, that was a game indeed. So we are three one up for Cuff, but there are a lot of rematches inbound. So let's see see each other in game number five. All right, game number five. And by the way, I just realized that the previous map is indeed an RAGL map. I just never bothered playing it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this also looks like a super interesting map. Has this been designed by Mo? There is a naval yard. There is oil derricks on an island. I, I really like this layout, gotta say. Too bad we can't see uh, the author of the map, as far as I'm aware. I think we have to go into the would have to go into uh, the settings, I believe, or the YAML. Either way, it's a French mirror this time around. Let's go back into... Uh, back from omniscient... Uh, omniscient spectator mode to limited vision cones, because that's what we're used to in RA. Also, the bridges can be repaired. That is something that not everyone may be aware of, but if you send an engineer into the bridge tile, he will sacrifice himself, fuse himself into, uh, uh, I guess, into a couple of concrete pillars and, and complete the bridge. So it would be interesting. You would in theory have some, some flanking routes. The issue is that this is relatively close to the middle. So it's not really as much as, as of a flank and also those are two tiles wide, so they mess up the parting royally. So I'm 50-50 I'm on that one. Is this gonna be a cell on the naval yard? I mean, you can basically capture it for free, and I think it costs 750 or 1000, so it's like either three, 375 or, uh, or 500 credits that you get just a, as a rebate on capturing. Because I'm, I'm not sure you actually want to fit warships into this. There is a certain mission of the Soviet campaign where this kind of happens. I think it's uh, you have to defend a strait, uh, or you have to break through a strait in, I think, Riga or something? Where, I don't know the, I don't remember the exact geographic location, but you had to. Uh, no, it was the River Volga, wasn't it? And it was occupied by... Um, by allied cruisers. They barely fit into this small narrow strait or into into the Volga that is. That was a really cool mission back then. Oh well, there is actually a transport purchased for both players and Cops have been a little late on the trigger finger here. Destroyer can't kill a heavy tank, well, but a destroyer can outrange heavy tanks. Destroyers are busted. So destroyers are really self-sufficient. They suck against infantry, yes. And they are not uh, durable to to withstand a uh, tank in close quarters combat, but they they uh, act uh, they act as zone denial for basically anything you can throw at it. Um, tanks they outrange them, and they've got really good damage against tanks as well. Aircraft they are lethal against aircraft. Plus they can double tap their weapons, uh, just like any weapon with uh, air, like any unit with double weapon systems. Whoops. Oh, we're getting to finalize the kill here. First blood. <laughs> it's a bit late, but first blood that is indeed. 
Well, super infantry centric composition for dank shots, so no chance for the ranger to really uh, to really inflict any damage. Good hustle, but he still has the engineer. And ranger is being purchased for dank shot after a fourth harvester, so relatively late, but still gets to utilize his engineer, transport him around the battlefield. Yeah, destroyers. I would really, really love to see naval balance being being tackled next because it is such a fun element of RA, uh, a, consti a constitutive element as well of original RA, um, and it is just sorely lacking. The, the map variety is lacking as a result, and I would really, really like to see a balance overhaul, but I have no idea on how to act. Like I've I've made some suggestions, but they did neither of them worked out too great. At least the, the one change that I got in was making the missile subs anti-air as well. And now the, as a result they've got the wonkiest anti-air weapons in the game. <laughs> that have an AoE and they either one-shot two helicopters or three helicopters in a single salvo or they miss. <laughs> completely. And do like and, and scratch them as much as, as a pigeon hitting a rotor blade. It's really funny. But it is the best solution that uh, could have been concocted at the time. And it also was ages ago. So, there is a refinery for Cobb. Yeah, expansion refinery here. Dang shot a little late with his expansion, but nothing too crazy just yet. So, uh, some more words about destroyers. They are actually super viable here. Reason being, you can always maneuver about and you can uh, you can protect your own derricks, but you can also harass the ore fields. And destroyers have good line of sight, they've got good range, and they have tracking missiles that are really good against armored units. So yeah, they are a super efficient harvester harassment tool and zone denial as well. And you don't in these narrow in these narrow rivers you do not or bodies of water you do not want to build a sub pen because subs they thrive when there is an open space. They have to kite, they have to hit and run. Basically take a couple salvos or pot shots or even lead to torpedo shots against destroyers when you know the, when you think the opponent is looking and then get some damage in because otherwise it just turns into a, a weird wet, wet noodle fight and whoever messes up their part, their movement first loses because destroyers and subs counter each other in terms of damage. It's kind of weird but uh, the depth chargers if they hit are extremely lethal and conversely torpedoes are insane. The problem with torpedoes is they have got some sort of tracking. Oh, first aggression here. Nope, being denied. Ah, huh, transport is being used for line of sight. That's smart. Yeah, the, uh, the the weapons have some sort of tracking, but the problem is that this this tracking whoa, kills it. Nice. This sort of tracking leads to the torpedoes sometimes curving around um, curving around uh, cliffs and and shore tiles and not connecting, and they just explode into the shorelines harmlessly. Unlike depth chargers, which can just yeah be fired and lobbed over, over shore tiles. What a passive game, but allows me to get some words about naval balance in. So there's that. <laughs> this is the most passive I've ever seen them. All right, let's check the economy tab. It's even, like 2k lead and a little bank lead for calf as well. But the econ itself is even. Seven harvesters, three derricks. So they're both just trying to tap into their expansions and resources. It is 3-1 up for Cav, so he definitely needs to... Um, Dankshot needs to make something happen. Can you say destroyer push? I mean, if you get up to late game tier 3, it's actually fairly viable to park some cruisers in the middle. There's only one issue with this strategy, and... Ooh, hello, transport! There is one big issue with this strategy, though. And it is that if you're not spawning as allies, you cannot get a tech center. And thus, no cruises for you. Okay, the first push here got completely deflected and routed. So Kav's first sign of aggression, not, not really effective here. All right. Tank shot gets a nice little victory. Really clean, loses two or three tanks for it, but that's fine. Wipes an entire army. And Dank Shot has also parked a tank here with the transport. I like that. Ah, uh, I don't think Kav is aware at the time being. Radar Dome has been purchased. The score is 
I think 3-1. Oh, he is gonna get those ore trucks. Neat. Also in the middle, routing the forces, courtesy of the army being out of position. Oh, perfect deploy spot. Well, there's a turret though. That turret sh should have been a, a pillbox. That's okay. He can stall the fight long enough to actually get some defensive lines up. Plus, this is super heavily defended. So no chance of breaching here. And wow, the tank's still going. Raider Dome is tackled. Oh, artillery is starting to go in, but it is the only artillery that is ever going to come out here. MCV is in peril. In grave mortal danger. Tanks are being split off. Yeah, dealing with the artillery. That's good. Artillery down uh, for now. And no more chances of artillery being replenished. He also is parking his tanks in front of the war factory. I like what he's doing there. This just denies any chance at, uh, at vehicle spawning. And he is still going. The infantry presence has been eliminated here. Needs to kill off the Conyer. <laughs> Yo, tank shot. That's a gift. Accept the gift. Oh, he's fighting here. He lost his MCV, but that's fine. That was just the expansion MCV. Why has he not killed the Conyard of Cav? He's about to kill the war factory. That is super, that is super good though. <laughs> Medic, a little bit of staying power. Who's got Tanya? Let's see. Tech center is here. So that must, yeah, that's Tanya here. Give it to me. She is, yeah, lives long enough to clean up all the infantry and now the uh, tanks got to go to town. Oh, Chi Chi being called. All right, that's the 3-2. Yeah, there was no chance at a comeback here uh, anymore. Tier 3 had been acquired. The armies had been wiped twice. That was just a super, super clean vic victory. And dare I say it, the transport with one single lonesome tank played a pivotal role in just killing off some more economy. Super inventive and creative gameplay here on both sides. And this time, dang shot, yeah, yeah. Coming out ahead, it is 3-2, the gap is closing. We are also uh, nearing the, basically the middle of this best of 11. So for the time being, I'm gonna leave you with those jolly pictures and we are going to uh, see each other again somewhere later this week when I'm gonna be casting uh, game number six and probably number seven, depending on the game length. Also, yeah, again, not to be political, but uh, no more war on European soil, please stop that shit. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Five aces out.